Irish exits are the best. An Irish exit is where you basically leave the party without telling anybody, just kind of like get up and kind of slowly, quietly, just all of a sudden you're gone. It's like, hey, where's that person? There's a whole story about that. Actually, here's the story. Hi, my name is Father Mike Schmitz, and this is Ascension Presents. So um, over the course of my years as a priest, I have talked with a lot of guys who um, enter the seminary. And I talked to a lot of women who entered the convent. And it's one of those kind of situations where sometimes what happens is this. Here is a guy who's dating a girl and he breaks up in order to go to seminary. Here's a girl dating a guy who breaks up to go to the convent. While they're there, like while they're on their way to the seminary or while they're in the convent, what kind of a thing, um, sometimes, sometimes what happens is they meet someone and they're like, oh my gosh, this is the reason why I was brought to the seminary or this is the reason why I was brought to the convent. And, and then... This, this tension can happen of like, should I leave again? Should I go again? Should I leave again? Should I go again? I know there are tons of vocation stories. We have some priests in our diocese who were in and out of the seminary, kind of played a little hopscotch with the seminary and a bunch of women religious that I know who are kind of in and kind of out a little bit. So that can happen and it can all be great. Also know people in and out who um, are happily married now. It's wonderful. It's great. It's, you just want to follow God's will. But this also happened to me at one point in my life where I was just kind of like, okay, now, I, broken up, you know, I'm in seminary, like, oh, should I, is this, was I brought to the seminary to meet this person? That kind of thing, right? I remember going to confession, kind of just bringing this all to, to the priest. And he said, okay, pay attention to all these things. He said, but what you don't want to do is you don't want to be an Irish bachelor. And I was like, oh, sorry, what? Because <laughs> I know what an Irish exit is. We have a bunch of Irish priests in our diocese that came from Ireland. That's where Irish priests come from. <laughs> a bunch of old guys now, you know, they're retired at this point. And we had our clergy conference. So at one point I was talking with my, my buddy, Father Anthony, and we're just hanging out. And all of a sudden, another brother priest, Father Michael, he comes in and I'm like, hey, what are you doing? He's like, I'm hanging out with the Irish guys. We're like, oh, wow, that's awesome. We've never been able to hang out with these Irish old guys. And we went to their, you know, their room at this, at this conference. And uh, they're kind of telling stories about Ireland and telling stories about the diocese back in the day. And uh, at one point, the priest I was with, Father Anthony, got up to use the restroom and then never came back like 20 30 minutes later, we're like, where's Father Anthony? And the next day, I'm like, dude, what, what happened to you? And he's like, oh, I just had, you know, it's late. So I had to pull the old Irish exit. And I thought, that's amazing. You, you pulled an Irish exit in a room full of Irish priests. It was amazing. It was so cool. Anyways, I know what the Irish exit is now. The Irish bachelor, he said. You don't want to be an Irish bachelor. Okay, what is that? He says, the Irish bachelor is the guy who breaks up with the girl to go to seminary. But while he's in seminary, he's like, oh, no, 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 I need to I need to go out with someone. So I need to leave the seminary to date someone. And then he's there and he's dating. And it gets serious. And he's like, no, no, I need to go back to the seminary. Go back to the seminary. Then he's in seminary and he's getting further and further in his formation. He's like, ah, I can't do this anymore. You need to go back to dating. And he goes back and forth. You're basically, again, playing hopscotch, playing jump rope with a person's vocation. Now, he said, just don't do that. <laughs> Obviously, God's path for us very, very rarely is linear. It's very rarely just you know, get on the course and just stay the course until the end of the, end of the deal. It's oftentimes, okay, God, where are you calling me to go? And so we're paying attention to those signs, paying attention to those, those promptings of the Holy Spirit, paying, paying attention to reality, obviously. At the same time, there's, some, there's something about the virtue of stability, right? There's something about the virtue of staying the course. All of us can get that, that kind of that, that wild hair that says, well, maybe this means such and such and just pursue it. Okay, okay that's fine. But since we know that that happens, like since we know that that can be the case where it's just like, this is just kind of a, a whim right now. This is just kind of a, this is all, I'm, I mean, I'm in my vocation or pursuing my vocation and I realize that something else is attractive. That's great. That's real. That, that's, that's, that's acknowledge it, right? Attend to it in some degree. But then at the same time, we have to realize, but until I'm given an indication that this is the step I need to take, just stay the course. I like to be at peace and to just stay the course. And this is something that's really important for all of us. You know, Jesus, he says, let your yes be yes and your no be no. What is it? I think what he's inviting us to in that, it's not just to avoid rash oaths, but it's also to invite us to just be at peace. When you've said yes, let that yes be done. That's my yes. If you said no, let that no just be your no. If God wants you to change course, he will let you know it's time to change course in a way that you can't miss. The God who brought you to that place in a way that you couldn't miss will not lead you away from that place unless it's in a way that you cannot miss. Does that make sense? Like the God you trust, he brought me here. This is amazing. This is where I'm pursuing him and saying yes to him. He will not lead you away unless it's also in a way that you can't miss. So what do we do in the meantime? Well, in the meantime, there is this... 
there's three words. Stay the course. That, that in, the, in, the, in the ups and downs of the waves, like the worst time to change direction is in a crisis. Like the worst time, time to change direction is in the midst of a storm. The worst time to say, okay, I, I'm an abandoned ship is when, the, is, is, is when the ship needs to be steered. And so for us, for you in this moment, you might be in a place where it's like, I don't know what God wants. I thought it was this, but maybe it's this. You're right. Maybe it is. Maybe it means changing. But as wise spiritual advisors have said, never make a life-changing decision in the midst of desolation. St. Ignatius of Loyola, the founder of the Jesuits, had said, okay, if you've discerned, okay, this is where the Lord has placed me. Maybe that's to go to the convent. Maybe that's to go to seminary. Maybe that's to be in this relationship where it's, it's, okay, this this is a good relationship. If you're called to change course, don't change course in times of desolation because then we don't know. Am I, am I just trying to escape the situation? Am I just trying to escape the discomfort? Am I just trying to, am I acting out of fear? Wait till a time of consolation or at least a time of neutrality where it's like, okay, now in this moment, now I'm free. In this moment, I'm free to discern. Is this what God wants to continue to, to, continue to pursue? Or is God calling me to make an alteration? Is God calling to me to make a decision to go somewhere else? If I wait for that time of desolation to pass, and it's going to pass, then we actually have more clear thinking. We have more clear perception. We have more clear discernment. I'm not just hopscotching back and forth across the line saying, here I'm in, no, I'm out, no, I'm here, I'm out, just to be able to say, okay, Lord, I'm all in for you. And if I'm in a time of desolation, um, I'm going to wait. And in a time of consolation, I'll be free to be able to hear your voice more clearly, to see your will more, more, more honestly, more truly, and to freely say yes to you wherever you're leading me. Does that make sense? Hopefully it does. Anyways, let your yes be yes and your no be no. If God's calling you to change direction, he will always invite you to change direction in time of consolation. Rarely, rarely change direction in time of desolation. That's all I got from us. That's all I got from all of us. Man, I can't do this exit thing. For all of us here to Sensor Presents, no, that's all, <laughs> that's all I've got. From all of us here, slow it down. That's all I've got. From all of us here to Sensor Presents, my name is Father Mike. God bless. Remember, the God who brought you to that place in a way you couldn't miss is not going to lead you away from that place in a way that you cannot miss.